Established five months ago, this nano aquarium was created to exclusively house four freshwater pipefish. After the first few weeks, I lost two of them on the same day. They all were eating well and getting along fine. Two months ago, another one disappeared. I never found its body, it just vanished, leaving one sole survivor who has grown out well and appears happy and healthy. Being unfamiliar with this species, I soon found out that all that is written about them is true regarding the difficulty incurred with feeding them. They absolutely prefer live food, and this one has shown no interest in anything else. When feeding, the instinct to hunt is very strong, and watching this animal circle its prey positioning itself to only devour the shrimp head first. It's a fascinating ritual to observe. This specialty feeding requires having live brine shrimp available at all times. Fortunately, I have access to a constant supply of a live adult brine shrimp and have begun hatching baby brine on occasion for those rare instances when my supply is inadequate. But more about that later. I slowly added a few tank mates, keeping in mind the priority was making sure the pipefish had little to no competition for food. They are casual eaters, taking their time hunting the shrimp before attacking them. A few ghost shrimp and nerite snails were housed with the pipes just to keep things tidy. As the number of pipefish began decreasing, I made an adjustment to the aquarium's inhabitants. The ghost shrimp were removed and two Elegans Cory catfish were introduced to maintain the plant-strewn substrate. The Cory's did not exert pressure on the pipefish during feeding, mostly staying down low and cleaning up with the pipe mist. In an attempt to provide an alternate source of constant food for the pipefish, a group of carbon really neocaridina shrimp were added to the mix. My hope was to get the shrimp to begin to multiply, providing a supply of shrimplets for the pipe to hunt down. There are still shrimp in the tank, and although I've seen many buried females, I've never seen any shrimplets. This approach never took off, and I consider it a failure. So the brine shrimp shuffle continues. A month or so ago, my local fish store received in an order that included sparkling garamis. Researching the species and discovering they are a dwarf form and tailor-made for nano-aquariums, I purchased four of them. Hell, they weren't much bigger than the brine shrimp, so I assumed that they would be a safe addition. To my surprise, these tiny fish have ferocious appetites and destroy multiple brine shrimp almost as large as themselves. Because of this revelation, it is now necessary to feed more brine shrimp than previously to make sure the pipe gets his share of the bounty. Even with feeding the garamis a few flakes prior to introducing the brine, they eat like pigs. Adding them may have been a mistake, but there's no doubt that they are pretty little fish. In the quest to maintain a consistent supply of live adult brine shrimp, many different approaches were tried to promote the longevity of the brine, eliminating the need to make multiple trips to the fish store to replenish the supply. When I receive the brine, I feed them, and about an hour later, put them in the refrigerator. Midweek, the container is removed from the fridge and allowed to warm to room temperature. A 50% water change is performed and they are fed again and then put back into the refrigerator. The result of this survival rate was about six days. I then theorized that perhaps the issue was the volume of water I was keeping the brine shrimp in was insufficient. Having an empty five gallon aquarium available, I assembled a small marine environment, bare bottomed, equipped with small multiple filters only utilizing mature biological media 
and a good quality LED light to promote algae growth for the brine shrimp to feed on. This approach yielded a fair amount of healthy shrimp over the course of a week. One problem was the accumulation of dead shrimp on the bottom glass, which was subsequently siphoned out twice a week and fed to my other aquariums. Four blue leg hermit crabs were added to trim up the algae growth and help consume the dead shrimp. The brine shrimp were doing well, being fed three times a week. As a long time fish keeper, the look of this tank was insufficient. Some excess sand was added to provide a half inch substrate and three pieces of live rock for aesthetics. To supplement the depletion of the brine shrimp, a weekly infusion of fresh shrimp was added to the tank. Things were going well when I suddenly realized the tank was full of copiapods. Growing from the excess photoplankton being fed to the brine shrimp, as well as consuming the waste being produced from the shrimp. A peppermint shrimp, emerald crab, and an olive snail were added to help boost the cleanup process, as well as adding a few more live rocks, bringing the total tonnage of live rock to a whopping six pounds. There was a constant supply of brine shrimp for the pipefish, but since I suffer from a severe case of multi-tank syndrome, I was not satisfied. Now, admitting with full disclosure, I'm a freshwater hobbyist through and through. But if there is one marine fish I consider to be the most beautiful and interesting, it would be a mandarin dragonette. And oddly, I favor the spotted variety over the green. Sure enough, my local store received in a batch of mandarins, and among them was this small one and a half inch spotted female. I observed her carefully at the shop, and although she was pretty thin, she was moving all around the large holding tank, picking at everything she came near. Yep, I took her home. There was virtually no one who would advise a mandarin can survive in such a small tank, but I believed in my particular situation. In this particular setup, it just might work. Although she is forced to live in an efficiency apartment, she has access to a very well-stocked pantry and refrigerator. She wanders around the aquascape constantly. She doesn't have too much to hunt for since food is surrounding her and she has been in this tank for three months. But she is one fat, happy fish. But wait, let's push the envelope a little more. Another fascinating feature in the marine world is the symbiotic relationship between a goby and a pistol shrimp. There are certain gobies and pistol shrimp that stay relatively small and may work in a small tank. And wouldn't you know, my local shop had a wheel of goby and his partner a tiger pistol shrimp for sale. They both were about an inch and a half and neither one seemed to be too much of a threat to deplete the brine shrimp or, or copiapod population resulting in harming the welfare of the mandarin. Beside, I feed the goby and pistol shrimp frozen mysis shrimp and pellets to deter them from eating too much of the live brine. Okay, now I'm content. Well, almost. One last component was desired, an easy to care for live coral. Being partial to Xenia coral and knowing it is relatively easy to keep, I had the perfect spot for a few small heads to complete the aquascape. There you have it. This tank's current configuration is two months old, and each day when I check on its status, I fully expect for it to have crashed and burned, but it is simply rolling along. Water is crystal clear. I change one gallon of water a week, and all the inhabitants are doing well. They are active except for the emerald crab and the olive snail, which I very rarely see. And they all eat earnestly. Now I know I'm probably going to get slammed for this by experienced marine hobbyists and rightfully so. I'm fully aware that this is a foolhardy attempt with a very low percentage of long-term success. This long-winded presentation is simply an attempt to describe in detail the reason and rationale I used to create this aquarium. 
although it will be deemed by most as an abomination. Thanks for watching.